Good afternoon and evening, folks. It is David Schlothauer here in the weather office, keeping an eye on your weather forecast for May the 4th, 2023. In this video, we are monitoring the severe weather chances that do continue over the high plains and the deep south over the next few days with large hail, strong winds, and some tornadoes. But not only that, we are also monitoring the cold, unsettled weather across California, Nevada, and the desert southwest. Also, if you haven't already, please consider completing the semi-annual YouTube channel survey for May the 4th, 2023. It is very, very highly recommended that you do that. We are only up to 40 responses, so please share this survey with your family and friends. The more responses we get, the more likely I am able to make accurate, honest decisions with the YouTube channel going forward. So if you haven't completed the survey yet, I would highly recommend doing so with the link in the description below this video. So here's a detailed look at the latest European model for May the 4th, 2023, and we can see with what it's showing currently over the deep south and the southern high plains. We can see quite a bit of green here, a indication we are seeing pop-up showers and thunderstorms, which is on the lower right side of the video that I am recording here. Some strong thunderstorms going on over northern Texas. So these storms will continue to move further east and intensify over the next few hours with shower chances continuing over California. These showers are going to be with you all over the next few days, and we can see that here. Let's go into tomorrow afternoon where we have showers moving into the deep south into portions of the Ozarks with more storms that are going to be firing up here over central Texas. As we can see some of the green colors there, so we're looking at some pop-up showers and thunderstorms each and every afternoon because we have a pretty unstable air mass overhead with some pretty strong to extreme instability. But the showers and snow chances continue across the Pacific Northwest. So if you're in California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, you're going to see some inclement weather, part of a weather disturbance that doesn't really want to leave very much. So if you're doing anything outdoors for Friday, just consider it's going to be kind of wet at times. Maybe some showers and thunderstorms too in the higher deserts there, the northern deserts of the U.S. So we're going to go into the weekend and we're seeing more of these showers and thunderstorms that are likely to pop up over central Texas over the deep south where we do have again those green colors that indicate light to moderate precipitation and then across the northern tier of the u.s we might see some elevated nature storms over the dakotas montana and portions there of um say if you're in minnesota if you are in wisconsin this is going to be for the weekend so anything outdoors just consider it's going to be quite wet all right and then more storms that do look to pop up again on Sunday. So again, every afternoon, we're looking at these pulsating effect type showers. So here's a look now at the instability forecast. It's a good idea that we kind of look at this product because we haven't visited this in quite some time. So this is a look at the NAM 3 kilometer model on weathermodels.com. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to that website. It is not free to use. You have to pay some money to use their service. So here's a look at the instability forecast for this is uh, basically for today. This is going to be for tomorrow. And we can see, look at all this red on your screen. That's quite a bit of instability. We're looking at uh, strong to even extreme instability with these CAPE numbers, surface base speaking here, anywhere between four to maybe 5,000 joules per kilogram. So if we get a strong thunderstorm in this, could be producing some very large hailstones and some very strong wind gusts that could be pretty significant, all right? And then the same thing goes and continues all the way through Saturday. This is why we're going to have the pulsating effect type showers that are going to be popping up from Texas into Oklahoma, into Arkansas, Missouri, and even perhaps eastern Kansas. Kind of right along this dry line and where we have a lot of this moisture moving north here, 
It's going to affect a lot of higher dew points. Dew points in the mid to upper 70s combined with very steep mid-level lapse rates of about uh, 8 to 9 degrees Celsius per one kilometer going to yield extreme instability across the deep south here and the southern high plains for the next few days. So just watch out. If you are under a thunderstorm, it could be pretty energetic. Lots of lightning, some thunder, some um, strong winds, and maybe a tornado or two. And speaking of severe weather, this is the day one Storm Prediction Center convective outlook right now issued by the SPC. And we can see there's a slight risk for Central Texas for Southern Oklahoma under a slight risk for severe weather. This is driven by the chances today for tornadoes. There's a small 5% risk there over Northern Texas, Southern Oklahoma. The wind risk is five and the hail risk is uh, oh, wait, no, this is the day two. Oopsie. The hail risk here is a 15 sig uh, percent there for northern Texas and much of central and southwestern Texas. Day two, we're also looking at a 2% chance of tornadoes combined with a large hail threat primarily. The wind threat really doesn't look to be a big deal at all, similar to today, but tomorrow might be a lot smaller when it comes to the severe risk. But nevertheless, there is going to be some severe weather uh, really honed in in central Texas. Also a marginal risk for severe weather over Arkansas and Mississippi, including for portions there of Nebraska. Just a level one out of five on the severe weather index scale. We're not talking about anything substantial this time of the year just yet. So this is a look at the jet stream forecast, and I'm going to explain why we're going to see the pulsating effect storms. So players of the game here are, we have a trough of low pressure over California, over Nevada. We got a, what we call an omega block, this high pressure system up here to the north in southern Canada, really responsible for some very warm to near record breaking temperatures. And we have what well, we have a little shortwave disturbance right here over northwestern Texas. That's giving rise for the thunderstorms today. So tomorrow we get another one of these disturbances uh, across. Oh wait, no, this is this is yeah, this is tomorrow. Uh, we have a little short wave that is going to be ejecting out of say off the lee side of the Rockies tomorrow. And that's going to correspond to some modest height falls over northern Texas and portions of Oklahoma. And so there is going to be a little bit of severe weather that does pop up over central Texas tomorrow. But again, uh, due to poor forcing, not very quick height falls, and not a very dynamic atmosphere, we're only looking at a isolated risk for severe weather in these areas. Now, with the jet max here that is going to be exiting over Nebraska, that's also why there is going to be some severe weather too in response to this large wave trough that is currently over much of the Pacific Northwest. This continues to be a thing all the way into Sunday and Monday with, again, these perturbations in the flow of ejecting energetic um, wind, um, wind maximums. And every time that happens, we do get some forcing, we get some lift in the atmosphere, and that helps to destabilize things with moisture kind of cutting underneath that, uh, westerly flow aloft. All right. Right now at the moment, I don't see anything significant, but we might have to keep an eye on this little guy here in Texas by the end of next week. That is very far out in time in my uh, in my radar for May 11th. So we're not really concerned about anything substantial, anything big in the short term or in the um, kind of in the medium range forecast standpoint, though. But it's always a good idea to stay tuned on my YouTube channel. And you could only do that if you do subscribe, share this video with your family and friends, and also um, hit the like button and leave a comment in the section below. And also it's a good idea, we do, um, we do check out today's uh, promotion, TrilogyMaps.com. I am incredibly excited to announce that I'm officially an affiliate with TrilogyMaps.com. The link will be in the description and the pinned comment below. Trilogy Maps has created the highest definition, the most customizable digital maps you can find anywhere online at a highly affordable price. These maps are so customizable due to a very unique layering system that makes it possible to create whatever map you like. 
Making weather maps that look incredibly professional has never been this easy before. So if you want the highest definition, the most customizable, and the most professional looking weather maps that you can make up for a very affordable price, go ahead and check out TrilogyMaps.com. And again, be sure to use my 20% off discount code by going to TrilogyMaps.com and then entering the code David before finalizing your purchase. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will be back here in the office again for another video weather discussion for your Friday.